Got it. Okay. My name is Renita Lavolsi. I'm with the San Francisco Department of Elections, and today I'm going to go over some of the local propositions I have from the Ballot Simplification Committee, uh, what a yes vote means and what a no vote means for the propositions. So you've requested that I go over E, G, H, I, J, K, and L. Before I go over those, I just want to let you know that the registration deadline for registering to vote for this election is November 20th. So you need to October complete, 20th. excuse me, thank you. October. October 20th, wishful thinking. October 20th <laughs> is the deadline to register to vote for this election. Um, if you are currently registered and would like to become a vote by mail voter, the deadline for that is October 28th. Of course, the election is November 4th, okay? I'm gonna get started with Proposition E, which is a tax on sugar-sweetened beverages. So this is how it will look on your um, ballot, and it is, shall the city collect a tax on two cents per ounce from the distributors of sugar-sweet beverages to fund health, nutrition, physical education and active recreation programs. So that's what you will see on the ballot. What I have from the Ballot Simplification Committee is what a yes vote means, and I have to read directly from that so as to not appear to be persuading you in any shape or fashion. So if you vote yes, you want the city to collect a two cents, a tax of two cents per ounce from the distributors of sugar sweet beverages to fund health, nutrition, physical education, and active recreation programs. Does anyone have any questions on that? I think that's, that's an important part to point out, is it's from the distributors. The tax will be on the distributors. Yeah, on the distributors, right. not on the store. Correct. On the distributor. Correct. And I think that's where a lot of people have concerns, is it's a store tax, and it's everything is taxed. Because, I mean, that's what I've heard. No. It is a tax that will be, if Proposition E pass, will be imposed on the distributors of sugar sweetened beverages. However, what that means is that distributors will, of course, pass that increase in cost on to the consumer. But there is no tax on the stores that sell these products. It's on the distributors of sugar sweetened beverages. And it's two cents per ounce. Okay? Does that answer your question? That's one question. The other question is, um, in the voter pamphlet, they list all the beverages that are exempted, and they list all the beverages that are taxed, mm -hmm. except tea. And, but it talks about how uh, some be beverages are taxed based upon ounces. Everything and is going to be taxed um, two cents per ounce. So every, every sugar sweet beverage is going to be taxed two cents per ounce. But what my concern is, um, if they're looking also at calories, and if your beverage has over 25 calories. They're not looking at calories. So I, how so what kind of sugar? It's uh, sugar added, as far as I know. Like what if just the sugar already occurs in the... That's a good question. I actually don't have the answer to that. It, I think that's those details are outlined in the voter information. In, in the voter template, it said if it's a naturally occurring sugar, not added, it's not taxed. Okay, so for example, orange juice. Juices, for the most part, if they are 100% juice, they they already have a certain amount of sugar that's, that naturally occurs in them. But if you look on the Welch's, I, mean, I know Welch's is the, the best. It's, it has a little asterisk by sugar. It says naturally occurring in the fruit. So they don't add sugar to the drink. It's when they, when they added sugar to it, you look on the ingredients, it says 100% uh, juice, sugar, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, dextrose, fructose, other bunch of toses. Um, all that is sugar, and all that can get taxed. And it's per ounce. Per ounce. Two cents per ounce. Okay? So a no vote means you do not want uh, the city to collect this tax. So I can give you the basic information you will have to consult your voter information pamphlet to have more details, because there are much more details. One of the things that you have, your voter information pamphlet, is you have the arguments for 
and against each proposition. And if you're looking at both of those, you may be able to, to come to a conclusion on how you should vote. Okay. Okay. But I can give you the basic information. Uh, my, my, my only worry is diet tea. I can't answer I what, I mean, what that's going to happen. Uh, because it's the only thing that's not covered in the actual legislation. Okay. Well, I mean, it's just. And what constitutes sugar? Is it like fake sugar or real sugar? Oh, I don't know. Um, artificial, artificial, you know, they're in the voter pamphlet, there's a list or of healthy exempted sugar? products. I don't know. Um, because diet I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay. Because I just don't have the answer to this question. Well, I'm just saying, but it's in the voter pamphlet, all the exempted products. Okay. So I'm going to move on to G. I'm going to move quickly through here. Prop G, okay. So Proposition G is an additional tax transfer on residential property sold within five years of purchase. Okay. So as it reads, shall the city impose an additional tax of between 14% and 24% on the total sale price of certain multi-unit residential properties that are sold within five years of purchase or transfer subject to certain exceptions. So. If you vote yes, you want the city to impose an additional tax of between 14 and 24% on the total sale price of certain multi-unit residential properties that are sold within five years of purchase or transfer, subject to certain exceptions. The exceptions are outlined in your voter information pamphlet. This proposition, if it passes, will be subject to multi-family units. So single family residents are not a part of this. So if you if you own or are selling or purchase a building or inherit a building of two units or more, this tax applies. If you were to purchase it and sell it within that five year period, then you're looking at being subject to this tax. Okay? And if you vote no, you do not want the city to impose this additional tax. I don't have any questions. I like this one because it goes after the real estate speculators that flip houses and flip buildings and evict seniors and disabled people. Um, so I really like this. And it's hard to say Democrats is the Okay. City and county does not. Or yeah, the elections does not uh, endorse. Since, since and the, the Democratic Party doesn't either. So the Central City Democrats is co-sponsoring this event. That's okay. Uh, so that That's fine. Know. So, no questions on that one? Okay. So, I'm going to go on to H. Prop H. I just covered So, that. requiring certain Golden Gate Park athletic fields to be kept as grass with no artificial lighting. So H says, shall the city be required to keep natural grass at all athletic fields in Golden Gate Park west of Crossover Drive and to prohibit nighttime sports field lighting in these areas? Okay? Well, so yes. some new things have come out in the news. NBC News has found a correlation between the fake grass and the little pellets that kind of aerate the grass, the fake, the fake grass. Uh, it's causing Hodgkin's lymphoma in kids. So there's a big story about that. So well, that that just came out after the ballot uh, was put on the before it was put on the ballot. So my question is, is if there's new information about health hazards connected with this artificial turf, even if it passes, it's still going to you know they're finding out that it's really not healthy for kids to play on. Mm -hmm. What's your question? If they find out. If it's not healthy for kids, can they change it again, even if it passes? Well, it hasn't passed yet, so we don't know. That that information is out there, so that may influence the way people vote, but it hasn't passed yet, because we haven't voted yet. So we, we will see if that affects it. Okay, my, my problem with it is, I, which follows this one, um, puts artificial grass on an athletic field with night lighting in everywhere but here. And so it's like, we're going to have two sets of for our priorities in the city. Well, why don't so I go through what a yes vote means? 
you can. Only get to I, I can bring that So if you vote yes, you want to require the city to keep natural grass at all athletic fields in Golden Gate Park west of Crossover Drive. So we're just talking about that area. It's not the whole city. It's that yeah. particular area, okay? And to prohibit nighttime sports field lighting in these areas. So if you are voting yes for Proposition 8, you are voting to only have natural grass in those areas and to have no nighttime lighting in those areas. Which distracts That's what the you're birds. voting for if you vote yes. Yeah, it distracts the birds, that lighting. If you vote no, you do not want to require the city to keep natural grass at all athletic fields in Golden Gate Park West or Crossover Drive. And you do not want to prohibit nighttime sports field lighting in these areas. So. Listen carefully. If you vote no, you are not opposed to artificial turf, yeah. and you do not want to prohibit nighttime lighting. So you you don't mind if there's nighttime lighting. Okay. So you see the difference yeah. in the yes vote and the no vote. Now, as you said, I, which is a, is a bit different. Shall the city allow renovations to children's playgrounds, walking trails, and athletic fields? If such renovations, which could include installing artificial turf or nighttime lighting on athletic fields, would double their anticipated use, and if an environmental impact report has been certified. Well, that's the important part. That EIR. Well, no, that EIR is important because all what you're bringing out would come out in that EIR, which would. Um, in turn, put it in front of the planning department as well as the health commission to uh, justify whether using artificial turf is justified for health reasons because it'd be in that EIR to be studied. So that's very good. That's, a, that's extremely good. Uh, I'm against it. Uh, okay. Let me go through what a yes vote means and what a no vote means. If you vote, if you vote yes, you want to amend the park code so that the city shall allow renovations to children's playgrounds, walking trails, and athletic fields if such renovations would double their anticipated usage and if an environmental impact report has been certified. These renovations could include installing artificial turf or nighttime lighting in these fields. So what that means is there could be, once there is an environmental impact report certified, the renovations could, it could include artificial turf and nighttime lighting, but not necessarily. Does that make sense? It makes a lot, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Because it's so do you see the difference it's between H and J? Yes, sir, H and no, no, I. Okay. The, I mean, it's just, I think it's important to realize that um, at least I, I would say from a parent's perspective that you're taking, I talks about the usage of the facility to renovate, the way I understand it. Well, there are more details in the, and, the, the and voter information. It takes the power away from the neighborhoods, though, and gives it to the city. See, well, when the no, neighborhoods well, don't no, have it. Doesn't. Well, well, because on EIR, studies uh, all that. It, it, because, see, I you have to have the EIR. You can't just go out and uh, park director say, we're going to rehab this. You have to do a study. It has to be worked out. It has to be thought out. It has to be planned out. There has to be community hearings. There has to be meetings. There's all kinds of things. EIRs are very, very specific. And if you have to have an EIR on a project, you're having five or six community meetings, all kinds of input from the residents. So it's not just the city doing it. So it's really very good. Okay. So if you vote no, you do not want to make these changes to the park code. That's if you okay. vote no. That's if you vote no for H. I, excuse me, I. I. I my apologies. <laughs> so Proposition J, this is the minimum wage increase. Prop J. Shall the city gradually increase the minimum wage from, excuse me, start over. Shall the city gradually increase the minimum wage to $15 per hour by July 1, 2018, with further increases based on inflation? Okay. 
okay? So what a yes vote means. If you vote yes, you want the city to gradually increase the minimum wage to $15 per hour by July 1st, 2018, with increases based on inflation after that. Now, I've done this presentation many times, and the biggest question that I've encountered is the assumption that if Proposition J passes, the minimum wage will increase to $15 per hour. That would not be the case. What will happen if Proposition J passes? The minimum wage would go from $10.75 per hour, which it currently is, to $12 per hour and then gradually increase, and by July 1st, 2018, it would be $15 per hour. So that's how it would function should it pass, okay? If you vote no, you do not want to increase the minimum wage. So that's what a number means, okay? So we're gonna move on to K, which is the affordable housing proposition. Okay. Now this has a lot to it, so I'll read this slowly. Shall it be city policy to help construct or rehabilitate at least 30,000 homes by 2020, more than 50% of which will be affordable for middle class households, and more than 33% of which will be affordable for low and moderate income households and secure sufficient funding to achieve that goal? Okay, so that's the, the letter of the, of the law, how it will look on your ballot. So in, in, in other words, if a developer wants to build some housing, he's got to build a certain percentage, but it has to be for low income? Well, what this is, is it's city policy. So if you vote yes, you want to make it city policy to help construct or rehabilitate at least 30,000 homes by 2020, and secure sufficient funding to achieve that goal. More than 50% of housing will be affordable for middle class houses, households, excuse me, with at least 33% affordable to low to moderate income housing. So it's a, it's a policy. So it's not saying that the, the city is required to do this. If Proposition K passes, what it means is this will be city policy and they will at some point do these things. Yeah. Basically what it I see it as it's another tool to encourage um, for-profit developers to either put the money in the fund to build the housing and then the city builds it or um, when they build the housing project they um, uh, put in uh, that project or on an off-site project uh, that percentage of housing up to that thirty thousand. Yeah. So I think it's a very it's very good. Yeah, I mean, worded I'm very strange. Yes. Mm -hmm. I guess mean, it's yes. complicated and wording. Uh, but I've had it's very good measure. Yes, okay. Okay. Housing that's built on public land would this be part? Would this be part of the mix? I don't know, but I think that information would be in your um, water information panel. Okay. 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 Then, I, I mean, it, as I as I, I said, we provide you with what the ballot simplification committee gives you. I would you. imagine that so would work out. That's something for you to research. Yeah. I imagine that would be worked out afterwards. So a no vote means you do not want to adopt this city policy. That's what a no vote means. That's what a no vote means for Proposition K. So last but not least, Proposition L is a policy regarding transportation priorities. Oh. So this one um, is fairly simple as far as it reads. Shall it be city policy to change parking and transportation priorities? So what a yes vote means is if you vote yes, you want the Board of Supervisors to adopt these changes in parking and transportation policies. Now, those policies in transportation and parking should be outlined in the voter information pamphlet. So more details are there, but this is what this means. So if you vote yes on L, you are saying you want to put it in the hands of the Board of Supervisors to adopt different or make changes 
to parking and transportation policy. But they didn't want to do it with the first place.